In the spring of 1862, Montgomery County residents were adapting to living in a war zone. Hardships intensified. Food and supplies were becoming expensive and scarce. There were frequent travel restrictions, checkpoints, and curfews. And the folks who endured the most disruption were those who lived among the ever-present Union camps, like here in the town of Poolsville. By the end of 1861, some 15,000 federal troops were encamped here. Keep in mind that the population of this town, then the second largest in the county, was only about 350 people. They were overwhelmed by the Union presence, and they weren't happy to have them here. One Union soldier reported the following in a letter to his parents. This town is one of the most treasonable towns in the South. Of late, the citizens of this place have grown bold, saucy, and defiant. There is not one Unionist in all of Poolsville. But the war did offer hope for some. People of color heralded the federal troops for their promise of a better future. Union encampments offered a tempting refuge to enslaved people. Federal officers in Poolsville were forced to respond to the concerns of local slave owners with the following orders. The general commanding has, with great concern, learned that in several instances, soldiers of the Corps have so far forgotten their duty as to excite and encourage insubordination among the colored servants in the neighborhood of their camps. In direct violation of the laws of the United States and of the state of Maryland in which they are serving. Since Maryland was a slave state that had not seceded from the Union, the 1850 Fugitive Slave Act was still in force. Lincoln tried to appease the slave owners in Maryland and the other loyal states by telling his generals to return runaway slaves belonging to loyal owners. At the same time, he was encouraging Maryland leaders to adopt a plan for gradual emancipation. On April 17, 1862, enslaved people in the District of Columbia were given their freedom. The law, signed that day by President Lincoln, promised compensation to the city's slaveholders. Those enslaved in Montgomery County sought to benefit from this new law, walking to the city for freedom. It's believed that sometime in 1862, a camp for runaway slaves from Virginia operated near Poolsville. The camp is thought to be the origin of Jerusalem, one of the largest and earliest African-American communities in Montgomery County but the wider community of Poolsville was inhospitable. The people here were more closely aligned with their neighbors just across the river in Loudoun County, Virginia. This was a popular crossing point connecting Poolsville to Virginia. A ferry has operated here since 1786. During the war, it was known as Conrad's Ferry. In 1873, Colonel Elijah Veers White bought it. The ferry was later renamed in his honor. Besides being a popular commuter route, White's Ferry is now a great recreation spot for activities such as fishing or kayaking. There can be no doubt that aid and valuable information has been recently given the rebels through their sympathizers here. Some of the citizens state that the rebels are moving toward Baltimore, and others declare that they saw regiments recrossing the Potomac into Virginia. They either know nothing concerning the rebel movements or are endeavoring to deceive us by giving false information. The New York Times published that report on September 12, 1862. While no one knew it yet, the Battle of Antietam in Frederick County near Sharpsburg was close at hand. The Confederacy had launched its first major invasion of the North, known as the Maryland Campaign. This is the Potomac River, just north of White's Ferry. Known as White's Ford, it got its name because Elijah White's Loudoun County Farm was located over there, directly across the river from here. At certain times of the year, it's possible to wade across the Potomac at this point. In fact, General Robert E. Lee and 35,000 men crossed the river here en route to Sharpsburg. They were cheered on by some of the residents of Poolsville. An officer with General Stewart, 
Heroes von Bork, was deeply moved. There were few moments, perhaps, from the beginning to the close of the war, of excitement more intense, of exhilaration more delightful, than when we ascended the opposite bank to the familiar but now strangely thrilling music of Maryland, my Maryland. And ring thy dauntless slogan song, Maryland, my Maryland. Here in the town of Poolsville, the continuing unease among the Secesh majority was fueled by the virtually continuous occupation by Federals throughout the war. Under the stewardship of historic Medley District, this town's rich history has been preserved. This is the oldest building in Poolsville, the John Pool House. Inside are Civil War artifacts found all around the town. While Lee was moving into Maryland, the Army of the Potomac, led by Union General George McClellan, was temporarily headquartered in Rockville. McClellan spent the night of September 7, 1862, at the home of the Bell Sisters, staunch Unionists, but also slave owners. This was their home. Today, it's the Bell Dawson House. It currently serves as exhibit space for the Montgomery County Historical Society, and is used to interpret the history of the many families who have lived here since 1815. The lives of the Bells, Dawsons, Davises, enslaved African Americans, and free servants are shown through furnishings, artifacts, photographs, and text, all reflecting the building's nearly 200-year history. As the armies were advancing toward Antietam, troops from both sides fanned out across western Montgomery County. During the days leading up to the battle, clashes between Union and Confederate soldiers erupted in communities from Poolsville to Comus. Union camps surrounded Sugarloaf Mountain. Atop that mountain, a federal signal station conveyed information on enemy movements to Union commanders. Here in Bellsville is the Monocacy Cemetery. The church that originally stood here was destroyed when Yankees used the pews for firewood and the chapel itself for a stable. In 1913, the chapel was rebuilt as a memorial to the local Confederates who gave their lives in this war. Their names are listed on this tablet and Southern crosses mark their graves. In nearby Barnesville, there was this account from Molly Hayes describing her family's experiences welcoming cavalrymen led by James Ewell Brown, or Jeb Stewart. These troops were encamped here for a week, came on Friday, and left the next one. On the second Friday, the troops were very active. We were told we had better move into the cellar where we slept for several nights. Before night, our town had changed hands five times, leaving us at night in the same hands as the morning. Saturday morning, the Confederates seemed very apprehensive that the Yankees were coming back in larger numbers. Molly and her family took refuge in the cellar of this house behind me. Those Yankees did return, overtaking the remaining Confederate soldiers who surrendered after a final battle about a mile outside of town. Molly Hayes went on to say, In the few remaining days before the Battle of Antietam, various Union troops came through Barnesville. Troops were constantly marching through the town, regiment after regiment, all going after General Robert E. Lee's army. Lee and McClellan met at Antietam on September 17, 1862. The battle ended with Lee's retreat the following day. Antietam was the bloodiest single day in American military history. Together, both sides suffered more than 23,000 casualties. No other American conflict even comes close. Antietam stands alone. 
back in Rockville, a temporary hospital operated out of the town's courthouse. A local doctor, Edward Stone Street, was put in charge of this 350-bed facility, where he saw to the care of soldiers wounded at Antietam. Many say that techniques learned during the Civil War gave birth to modern medicine. Today, Dr. Stone Street's one-room office stands next to the Bell Dawson House and serves as a museum to 19th century medicine. Folks here had no inkling that just one year later, their town would also be invaded by rebels. <laughs>